So this, this talk is called Entice Me, and it's about what would convince me to, uh, to split my old UTXOs and to sell BTC for, for BCH. And I'm going to talk about key items. And I'm just going to focus, focus on, on things that I think are, are most important that mm, you, might, you might not hear as much from other people. So, uh, and uh, here's some stuff about me. Um, uh, next one. So I, why, why you might want to listen, because uh, why, uh, you know, like, somebody, somebody was saying what, what he thinks is a good investment. That doesn't necessarily mean anything. So um, here's, here's some, some uh, a list, list of reasons. And, um, and the most important one is betting, betting on my own ideas, because I think that uh, we should, uh, the, the future of Bitcoin should be determined by a prediction market. So I am, I am acting like there is a prediction market that exists already. So when, if you watched my, my YouTube show at all, uh, if, if somebody is, is acting like, like a, a leader with no followers that looks, like, that looks a lot like a crazy person. So if I do become the leader in the future, then my earlier actions will look like genius in retrospect. But if I don't, <laughs> Then, then I will just be some crazy person on YouTube. So that's how, how I'm betting on my own ideas, and that's how you use a prediction market. I'm just not using, doing it with money, right? So uh, first item I'm looking for is people who are listening to me. And you guys are doing way better at this than, than the, the core group. So, so that's good. <laughs> but don't, don't listen too much, because cult members aren't valuable people. <laughs> OK. Um, so. Investment is about survival. It is about the survival of your portfolio. And uh, so, and I think that the, the key to, to success is to convince people that uh, BCH serves an important need in, in their portfolio. So they are going to, to uh, survive better by holding Bit Bitcoin Cash. And I think that this is something that people misunderstood about earlier things that I wrote, because I said that in, in investment is, is ultimately what, you know, what, what determines the, the success of Bitcoin. But um, you have to invest in something for good reasons. Okay? So I think that the people in the, the core camp don't uh, fully understand that. And they think that if they just get people to, to, to stay invested and they keep holding, then that automatically uh, is, is in, it, in and of itself uh, successful. Um, so people should be thinking, whatever is going around, on around here, and by here I mean the Bitcoin world, OK? Whatever's going on around BCH will probably still be around. And I think that that is sort of the, the key to success, if, if people are, are thinking, thinking that. Because then they don't have to worry about it. Because I think everything, everything in, in Bitcoin is crazy. So if there's anything that people feel like they don't have to worry too much about it, even if it's not going to you know, sky, skyrocket relative to, to anything else necessarily, just not being, being less worried, that's, that, is, that is the key. And uh, looking like you will survive a long time from now is not the same thing as having, having a long-term plan. So I just wanted to make that, that point clear. So second item. I'm looking for is people who are focused on survival as investors. So I don't actually know how to survive a long time, but I think merely focusing on that as the bottom line is important. Because to me, uh, the, uh, the, the core cult is trapped in a world of platonic forms, and they are not focused on uh, survival. And uh, so, uh, so Investment function of money. Investment function of money is to invest in the other investors. Okay, that's that's what the network effect means. So um, uh, uh, new new money forms by a coalescence of people around a common unit of account. And uh, uh, Christina Story gave me a, a terminology for this called a creativity cluster. 
So that's what I'm looking for. And I noticed that in his latest video on permissionless systems, uh, Rick Falconage, I hope I'm pronouncing that right, was trying to describe this, but he didn't have a good word for it. So Rick, if you're listening, you should say creativity cluster in the future. And it's on a later slide, but it's not, not on this slide. So third item. I'm looking for is investors who are good at surviving, who are looking to cluster with other investors who are good at surviving. Because that means they know what money is for. So that's good. Uh, uh, so uh, next slide. So this is the, the success path of BCH. Okay? So uh, the, the idea is a, a good network already exists, a good creativity cluster, and those are the, the old investors in Bitcoin. So you just kind of, so uh, to, to me, like, you know, the, people say Bitcoin Cash is not Bitcoin, but, uh, or that they're, they're cheating by making a, a fork instead of starting, starting over. But that's sort of like, that's, that's, the, that's what's, what's good about it, is they kept the most important part of Bitcoin, which is the other investors, and they just switched out everything else. So to me, that's, they, they, figured out, they figured out the right way of doing things, because they, they kept the, the most important part of Bitcoin. Um, and so the, the group of investors that have clustered together uh, when, when Bitcoin was forming can move, move together. Okay? So they can, they can stay invested in one another as, uh, uh, as Bitcoin Cash switches, okay, which is not what they can do with, with Litecoin or Dogecoin or something else. Um, so uh, so uh, a, sm a smooth transition. And I think the old unit account is, is BTC plus BCH plus the other, the other forks because before the forks happened, that, that is, that is what, what people were, were acquiring. In other words, what, what people were acquiring before is, is, now, is now an index fund, because that's, that what, that's what is, is in your, your portfolio now if you were acquiring Bitcoin before. So the old unit of, of account is now the Bitcoin index fund, and the way to succeed is to get uh, some, some of the, the old investors to focus more on Bitcoin Cash than on the other items in the index fund. And I don't think that you have to get them to focus very much because uh, it, it's possible to be, to be, be indifferent. And uh, most investors appear to be indifferent, at least as far as their, their actions are concerned. So the investors who are not indifferent have a much bigger effect on, on the outcome. Um, so I think you need to attract old investors to focus slightly more on Bitcoin Cash, and that's, that's really all it takes to win. Uh, so fourth item I'm looking for is old Bitcoin investors. Uh, okay, so current situation. BCH is the backup plan. And uh, this, this, so uh, I, I think that, see, I, I think that Bitcoin Cash needs to serve an important uh, uh, function in, in, the, in, in people's portfolios now, like the, the way it is. Because that's what will convince people that it, it will survive a long time. See, if it's useful now, then may, maybe, maybe it'll succeed in the future, but that's not, that is not necessarily the, the reason that, the, the main reason that you would want to invest in it, right? Or I should say that, that's what makes it look successful if there, there are reasons to invest in, in how it is now as, as opposed to just just uh, speculating on where, where, where it will be in the future. So I think that it is, it is realistic to treat BCH as, as the backup plan, and that's, that's how, how you should appeal to, to old investors, and that, that, that increases the, the chance of, of winning uh, because... Um, uh, because that's just, that's just focusing slightly more on, on BCH, which is all they really really need to do. So, uh, so fifth item I'm looking for is people who are acting like BCH is the backup plan, but who would prefer it to be 
the main plan. And to me, that is, that is a, a realistic way, way to behave. So you should be open-minded to the incredible success of, of BCH, but that is not what you should be, be banking on, okay? Uh, readiness for exponential growth equals uh, maximize creativity. So if uh, the, the way that BCH would be swapped out with BTC to become the main plan is if uh, uh, the, the BTC people do something stupid and uh, BCH is ready for exponential growth the, the moment people notice, okay? So, uh, cre so, okay, creativity cluster, again, if we have that, that is uh, better for exponential growth because a, a group of creative people who are all supporting one another can very easily accept new, new people. So I, I would like to see uh, work that is focused on making it easier for future people to, to be creative. And, uh, and uh, preferentially, um, preferentially supporting uh, future creativity over, uh, uh, well, over, over just about any, anything else, really. So sixth item, creative people. Uh, good, good investors are creative, but all, all creative people are good. So not all creative people are good investors. Uh, I'm just saying that to, di to distinguish these two possible things, because there could be creative people who are not good investors, but any, any creative people, is, that, looks, that looks good. Uh, creative people can appear to be deranged or degraded, so I think that you guys are doing good uh, at that. Um, <laughs> and it's, it's not, not objective, because nobody really knows what new things are genuinely not stupid, but uh, if, if there is a, uh, uh, if there are lot, lots of creative people who are all supporting one another, then you can just make lots and lots of stupid ideas, and some of them will randomly turn out to be good. So once again, I don't, I don't think that the, the core people understand the value of, of creativity very well, because uh, I, I don't think that they are, I don't think that their, their plan involves supporting future creativity of, of other people that they don't know. Uh, so, disadvantage of being the backup plan, closer to death. Uh, but, so greater creativity is required just to stay alive, but you already, you're, it's already something I'm telling you to do. So, there really isn't, isn't a problem here. And uh, if, if people see that, that you can survive while you're still closer to death, that's, that's a good sign, too. So, so, um, so I don't, I don't, I think that, that everything, this is, this is a disadvantage, but everything I already said, that you, it's, all, you, it's nothing, you're already, uh, you're already prepared for this if you're doing, doing what I already said. So, so next, next item, advantage of being the backup plan, riskiness. So remember in an earlier, earlier slide, I said that there, so, so if you're the backup plan, there is less, less riding on the success a BCH, right? So BCH can do all sorts of crazy things that, um, and, and get away with it, right? More, more, e more, more easily than, than the main plan, okay? And if you're, if you're closer to death, then you should do that anyway. So these two things work together. Um, but you shouldn't just take random risks. So later I'm gonna tell you what, what risks I think you should be taking that are, that are the best risks. So you need to, uh, to uh, take, take, uh, figure out the, the optimal way to, to be risky. So I'm going to make a suggestion on that. Um, so if, if, you can, if you can do things that are too risky for other people, right, then you can, you can uh, learn from situations that other people cannot be in, right? So if you can be risky, then you can learn, learn new things that other people don't know. So next item, learning something that the core team doesn't know how to find out. Um, and, uh, and also, this is why I think it's important from an investment perspective to treat BCH as the backup plan. 
because if, if people are investing in it with that mindset, then you know, then we can, then we can uh, uh, op optimize the, the core competency, right? Uh, be be more be more risky, and people aren't aren't as worried. Okay. Thank you. Uh, so, in order to increase the chances of a flippening, uh, we need to make everything more uncertain. So, um, if you watch my like discussions with people online, what what I what I always do is I kind of act like somebody who is open-minded, but actually can't really be convinced of. Uh, so so when, I, when I talk to like the core cult members, they, what they want is for me to sell BCH, right? And uh, they say like you can make, maybe you could have more BTC if you sold your, your BCH. But I just say like, ah, uh, you know, whatever. Uh, I, don't, I don't try to prove that, you know, that my, my strategy is, is the best one. See, I just say, I, I just want to be lazy and not worry about it, okay? So that is, that is, uh, that is creating uncertainty because I am saying I am not, not going to get uh, too involved in the conflict and you know, you, I'm, I'm fine with, with whatever, whatever happens. So what they, what, what, what they want is, is certainty because they want everybody to go along with uh, with their plan, so we need we need sustained uncertainty, and uh, so uh, uh, so the, I, I, and so I would want the the BCH price over the Bitcoin index fund to be more volatile than the index fund over the dollar price, because that 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 will mean that it is rational to uh, to to stay diversified. If if you uh, because getting getting in the conflict is clearly uh, you know more more difficult a, as an investor, so I would I would want I would and this is already happening so so that's good, um, at, so comfortable with long periods of certainty uh, uncertainty. So if you are already treating BCH as the backup plan. That means you're okay with uncertainty because you're just like, well, if anything goes wrong with BTC, we can just swap out BCH. That's that's uncertainty because you're you're saying any you're saying something can go wrong and you know whatever it's fine. Um, uncertainty is bad for fragile people and good good for anti-fragile people. And if you don't know what that means, you need to read the book because it's very good. Anti anti-fragile. Um, and so, uh, so next thing I'm looking for is anti-fragile people, because they they are people who are going to be attracted to uncertainty and will be able to live just fine in an uncertain environment. And in fact, that's that's good for them. So, uh, cult members don't like uncertainty, by the way, because that's one of the that's one of the ways that you emotionally manipulate people. Is people people are attracted to to certainty. So if you make them, them think that everything is certain, that makes them feel good, then they, then they don't want to, to talk to un, uncertain people as much. So uh, yeah, uncertainty is my favorite kind of certainty. Uh, okay, so the previous stuff I said is, are things that should be attractive to anybody who, who is, is, is thinking about what, what is going on, I think. So now I'm gonna talk about how to attract old Bitcoiners specifically, which is key to success. And this is where the riskiness comes in, because I'm going to tell you what is the optimal way to be risky, in my, my opinion. And oh, but I cannot tell you what the correct amount of riskiness is, because that's going to involve a, a conflict of, of interest if I were to say what, what the correct amount of riskiness is. So, other people have to figure that out. So next, next slide. So here's, here's what will attract the old Bitcoin investors. So if, if BCH is something where people think it's probably going to be around still in the future, no matter what crazy stuff happens in Bitcoin, which remember what I said is, is key, key to success. That is the key thing. If the old investors are thinking that, and they are not 
worried about what's going on in BCH, then that means the BCH over the Bitcoin index fund price is going to provide more feedback to the core chain than it is to the Bitcoin cash chain. So what the, what's going on with the price will, give you, will tell you more about what is happening with the core chain, okay? And that means that it is th this price is providing them with the best possible market feedback from the old investors in Bitcoin. Because remember, the old investors, they, they have a bigger, bigger effect on, on this price relative to other prices in, in Bitcoin. So we are amplifying the will of the old investors in Bitcoin with this price. And if you convince the old investors that Bitcoin Cash is going to be a survivor, not necessarily you know, uh, successful as in, in terms of winning, but just a survivor, then they don't have to worry about it, and they, they, the price will be, they will be focused on BTC, and that's what the price will reflect. And uh, I know that the, the core group does not want to pay attention to this price. So as long as they continue to try not to pay attention to it, then it is the most self-defeating if it is the best possible information. So the risk is that they will learn to pay attention to the feedback and be trained to behave better. And if that happens, then there will be less, less opportunity to swap BCH out for, for BTC, right? Uh, that's the risk, uh, but uh, I don't know. I, 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 but, it, but it also increases the uncertainty, right? Because if they are uh, trying, trying to ignore it, that means their, their mistakes will be bigger. Um, so uh, if you've read the book It, the monster's powers are like a mirror. That's what the book says. And if you saw my, my, uh, my video on uh, strategy in the core cash conflict, uh, I said that B BCH should be like the it monster. So that's what, that's what happens if investors are not worried about BCH's survival long term and they're not paying too much attention to it. Then, then the price becomes a, a mirror of B BTC. Um, so, so you maximize creativity and you're ready for exponential growth at any time. Investors aren't worried. So the ideal situation, I think, would be like the investors are thinking, wow, this BCH is really good for teaching the BTC people how to do what I want. Wait a minute. Maybe, maybe I should just go with BCH instead because they're so, so much easier to work with. That's, that's kind of what, I, what should be happening in, in the investor's mind, I think. So... Um, uh, so there are two, two ways to uh, make old Bitcoin investors more, more powerful, which is what will attract them to BCH. And so one of them is, is winning. And oh, I, already said, I already said this, but, um, uh, but there is, do there is, uh, you see what I'm saying? Like I'm saying that, that BCH can be somewhat altruistic toward the old investors in Bitcoin simply by providing this market feedback for, for BTC. See, so this is why, why it's a conflict of interest, because I would be fine if BCH trained the, the core developers to behave better. And th but that would also make it less, less likely to succeed if that happened. So there's, 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 there's the risk, uh, and uh, that's, that is the, the optimal risk, I think. And uh, once again, it's a conflict of interest for me to say what, what the correct amount would be. So, so, so other people should figure that out. Um, so if they were to say, we are the main plan, but BCH is the backup plan, that would be a lot better than, than what's happening now, right? And, and if, they, if they did that, then that would be a, uh, an idea that, that is more, more in line with, uh, with, with, with BTC being, being a, a good investment, I think. Uh, I guess I already said all of this. Uh, so, but ninth item, 
no, no one is worried about the core devs learning quickly enough. So you could, you, this could be the case because you are diversified, which is what I think is a good investment strategy, or because you don't think that will really happen. So uh, I don't know why, why people would, would be thinking that, but if they are not worried about the core devs learning quickly enough, then that, that is also a good sign. So that's my list. Um, next item, uh, con conclusion. Uh, yeah, it's a summary, maximize creativity, prepare for sustained open-mindedness, attract people who are creative and anti-fragile, be more indifferent to price than the core chain can afford to be by being better at survival, and enable best possible market feedback to core chain, and applaud them and stay in second position if they learn well, be prepared to expand exponentially anytime they make a mistake. And uh, last, last slide has uh, my, my Twitter handle and just a, here's, here's the list again. Thank you. All right. Thank, Thank you. you, Daniel. Now we have, uh, we have five minutes for Q&A and I think we have some awesome questions. So please go ahead. Well, I guess I think that you, you should figure out what uh, other people would, would think survival means, because this is, that would be something that people would have different uh, opinions about. Another question? Uh, do I get to pick who answers the question, or do you? You go ahead. You're in oh, charge. Okay. Well, go ahead. Uh, I see a hand up here. But don't, don't we need somebody with a microphone? To we do. We don't have a mic runner. You want to run? Hey, OK. Yeah, Simon Dixon from banktothefuture.com. Um, one of the challenges with Bitcoin has always been just the psychology of no one wants to be Bitcoin pizza guy. So you refer to things as an investment when we're trying to create cash. And the challenge is, is that when you create something successful, the price tends to go up, and then no one wants to spend it uh, because it's the rational thing to do, to spend the money that you think isn't going up in price and to save the money you think is going up. So I'm just wondering, that it, it seems like if this does succeed at becoming cash, then people won't want to spend it if the price is going up. And how do you overcome that? Because that's exactly what happened with Bitcoin and anything else that succeeds in this industry. Well, I mean, I think that that's fine. If, I mean, a portion of your investment portfolio should be in cash, and you shouldn't want to sell it un unless something better comes along, right? Because the, the value of cash in your portfolio is that you can take advantage of other people's mistakes, right? Because if, if a business starts to do badly, then the price goes down, and if, if you think it can still, still succeed, then you can buy it at a discount, and you're first in line because you're the one who's holding cash. And that's the value of cash in, as an investment uh, as a part of your, your portfolio. And if the value of the cash is going up rapidly and you think it's going to be higher in the future, then that, that just means there's not other things that you would want to buy with it at that particular time. Next question. Well, whatever. That, that's getting into details too much for me. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, hey, I was just wondering if you've updated or nuanced in any way your theory of hyper-Bitcoinization. OK, so uh, hyper-Bitcoinization is a, a guided imagination uh, article and it is it is not not a prediction so if you if you look at the article what i say is we should imagine what that scenario would would really look like because it it could really happen but uh i, I do not say anything about how how likely i think it is although i do act very confident about it but i, I don't know i don't i don't really have any any updates but i but i know that uh that the, the meme, hyper-Bitcoinization, hyper is, is sort of, ha, has been used to, uh, to, to generate hype in, in a way that I, I, 
I would not feel comfortable doing. And uh, we have time for one last question. Uh, there's somebody. <laughs> my name is Ben. Uh, I'm, okay. <laughs> I have a mining farm in China. Um, I can mine um, two, two Bitcoin within, uh, one Bitcoin within two days and, or five Bitcoin cash per day. So uh, there's a rumor that Ji Han Wu ha uh, has multiple, mi uh, multiple million Bitcoin cash on hands already. So my question is why I should uh, mining Bitcoin cash instead of uh, mining Bitcoin? Well, you should mine whatever is the most profitable. <laughs> that, that, that's it. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dan. All right.